Mars Sanctum. My cave of vine and moss is to my right about ten paces into that thicket that surrounds me now. So dense grows the swampland that sometimes it would take me up to thirty minutes to find the little hideaway I had fashioned, though I had been there hundreds and hundreds of times. I would look for the strips of white sheet, bright like bush ghosts, that hung around the woven walls. They would tell me where. All about me were my treasures, the stained bandages like flags, boxes of nails and tacks, a crate of electrical cord, my hammer, candles and plastic bags full of matches and tapers from the church, my bibles, twine, animal boxes and feathers and bird skulls, shells and nests, and some of my shoe boxes about ten. Pictures I had cut from magazines and threaded through the walls. The tiny blue glass bottles of scented water. And with these I kept my life trophies, my god tokens. The parts of her left behind, blood mementos. The whore's hair, her nightdress. The portrait of Cozy that I had delivered from the hands of those who rose up against her, sheared her, cast her out. The kindergraph and the instruction she had written on the back of it in verse. The painting of Beth, of her, fastened to the walls and the ceiling of the grotto, angled so that it hovered above me as I lay in my shell. On a carpet of pink silk and frill, yes, and the tent leaving their vanescent impression down my back or belly, the stroke of hair, a ruby bead sailing down a yellow strand, a trembling scarlet top, the bittersweet sip, oh the lifetimes lost in queer congress, hold up in that dark retreat, hold up in that dark retreat, hold up in that dark retreat. A fell tree trunk carved down the middle by a cleaver of lightning during the rain days, I guess, made a kind of pallet where I would lie stretched out between the two halves that I had padded with cardboard and moss, encapsulated by two walls of umbrage that twisted about a few clapboards I had nailed to the trunks as supports, the vines intertwining overhead to form a low ceiling. I could sit up with a full foot's grace, room enough for my angel too, who would come, in my later years, appear on the tree stump at the foot of my cocoon, then come inside and lie with me. Sometimes I heard thousands of voices, for God is many-tongued, whispering things to me as I lay there all alone. All my feelings of fear and of anger and of despair that I ate daily like bread would leave me and I would feel most powerful, most powerful. They taught me, he taught me how to deal with myself at first. Then later, he told me how to deal with the others. (laughs) 